On the bench this morning I have a Marconi Instruments 2955B and the problem it has right now is when you turn it on uh, you get no display so the uh, the green display doesn't uh, illuminate and uh, what you get is the three LEDs or the three lights here for the the mode light up and the input light lights up and you do hear a click on the inside on the internal from the machine and the fan comes on so that's with the the luminance turned all the way up so just to show you and that's it the uh, three LEDs and the two input LEDs light up. Now these should only only one of these should be lit at any one time and only one of these here that should be lit at any one time and there's no display and the intensity is at maximum and that's about as far as I've got so far. I've taken the, uh, the top cover off and also the back panel has been removed to access the power supply so that's where I'm going to look next so here's a view inside the top of the unit and I've actually removed the GPIO input here uh, because it has a fault um, if you look closely at the uh, GPIO panel you'll see that the 74 I believe it's a 7400 uh, logic chip here has blown its top literally so I took the GPIO out it wasn't connected internally anyway uh, so I just removed that from the uh, back panel just to get it out of the way for now then we have the power supply down at the uh, the rear here and there's the cooling fan. The cooling fan does spin when we uh, power it up so there are some signs of life and there's the power supply. I have uh, downloaded the circuit diagram for the unit and this is the, uh, the power supply and I've also got the diagram here for the monitor so I can take a look and see what voltages are there and what voltages are missing. It looks like um, there should be a plus or minus 12, um, at least plus or minus 12, and uh, several other voltages that may or may not be uh, available right now. So that's why I'm going to concentrate on the power supply. What I did notice was down underneath here, there's a, a coaxial, little coaxial cable and I noticed that it wasn't actually soldered it was through this little eye here which is looks like point 0.2 on the uh, power supply board but it wasn't actually soldered to it I don't know whether that, I guess that was in manufacture that uh, they poked it through the hole but it was never actually soldered and that's, I believe, from the 10 meg uh, oscillator. So uh, it may actually depend on whether the oscillator's functioning or not as to whether the power supply fires up. So that's a possible um, problem. Well, obviously it is a problem, but uh, whether that's the main issue or not, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, that's obviously something that needs attention. I have already tested these three fuses on the back here. Uh, there's a main input fuse and a couple of other fuses. It can be powered from an external DC supply. Uh, I think it needs around about four or five amps. Um, so uh, that's something that I can try if for any reason I can't get the uh, power supply to function. We could always try an external power supply and see if it'll power up from there. So I appear to have all the correct voltages <clears throat> on the power supply here 
here I have my uh, plus 12. So I have my plus 12 and here, here I've got the minus 12. But when I follow over to the to the um, to the board that drives the tube, the plus twelve is missing, and it's fed via this fuse in the centre here. And when I check the fuse, I find I've got the one-handed here. I've got 12 volts there, but the other side of the fuse, <coughs> the other side of the fuse here is nothing. So it looks like the fuse is gone. And that's the other side of the fuse. And there's pretty much nothing. So that fuse is blown for some reason. So I'm going to check to see if there's a short on the other side of that fuse going onto the um, the uh, supply for the uh, tube, which also has the 10, me 10 meg oscillator on board. So the uh, the CRT driver board isn't getting 12 volts because that fuse, uh, the fuse in here is blown. Strangely enough, when I test that uh, fuse, the fuse is okay. It's reading about, well it should be reading a short, but, yeah it's reading about two hours. So, um, yeah, strangely enough that fuse is fine. So, the fuse holder may be faulty, so uh, that's the next thing to check, see what's going on with the fuse holder. Make sure I've got continuity um, through the actual fuse holder, because it looks like that's the reason. Um, the 12 volts isn't getting onto the onto the board there on pin two, so it looks like it may just be a, a fuse holder problem. Okay, well now I do have continuity through this fuse, and that should give me the 12 volts to the CRT panel uh, up here. And I'm going to turn it on and see see what I hear. Usually you hear a couple of relay clicks when you power these on. There's one, two. So it looks like I may have found a problem. Let's have a look at the front of the unit. See what's going on. Yep, we've got a display now. So it may be that that was the only problem. And also that um, 10 meg uh, wire, the, uh, the 10 meg coaxial, wire that um, wasn't connected properly down on the uh, bottom of the power supply board which I still actually have to uh, connect properly um, there is a that right there if it'll focus that is not that's not soldered um, for now I just twisted it and I just this this uh, wire down here, so it's something a bit smaller to point with. This wire here, uh, the coaxial 10 meg feed uh, from the oscillator uh, to the power supply wasn't soldered, and so I need to solder that. And uh, looks like uh, we've fixed the problem. So I haven't replaced any of the, the electrolytics, and maybe I should. Um, I believe there are some stock faults with these caused by various electrolytic capacitors. So I may have a look around the board here and uh, see if I can see any obvious signs of capacitor failure. But uh, for now, it looks like we may have a working unit again. So I just connected the scope down here onto that 10 meg uh, oscillator signal and 
if you can see there, that's the 10 meg oscillator running, feeding into the power supply. So the 10 meg signal is there, it's just not well connected, so I'm going to uh, solder that in place and uh, then take a look see what's happening. And that's where the uh, 10 meg oscillator feeds into the power supply and that uh, connection was uh, not soldered. Uh, the wire was poked through the eyelet of the tag but it was never soldered from manufacturer I assume. So uh, anyway that's, uh, that's something that uh, was quite a surprise to see that. So the 10 meg comes in here, looks like it's divided down. There's a uh, 5 volt supply off the 12 volt rail that feeds the power to the chip there. And uh, looks like it uh, has some feedback. So uh, yeah, that's quite interesting that uh, that would be unsoldered, but uh, anyway, it's soldered now. Well, it's all back together now. Uh, all the power supply is all back together, the top and bottom case, and uh, I straightened those feet a little bit, so uh, that's going to look a little better. So uh, let's make sure everything still works. Okay. Yep. Seems to uh, be okay. Let's do the self test. All tests. Let's see how we uh, how we fare there. It takes a little while to go through these uh, this self test, but um, touch wood, everything will go through fine. So far, so good. I need to do some other tests uh, just just to get some idea of the uh, calibration. Okay, everything seems to be fine, so that's great. So now I can put it to some use. Very good. Well, I think that's about it for now. I can uh, do some other tests with this uh, test set. Um, I'm going to have to do some other tests, make sure everything appears to be working fine. And uh, if you liked the video, I hope you did. Um, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.